on and I'm going to show you today the components that goes into the off-grid uh, solar system, 128 watts, so we can understand what the components of the system are, how the system works, and how to assemble the system. So everything comes in a package, in a, in a case like this, so it's easy to carry with you on, your airplane, on the airplane or however you're coming into Kenya. Uh, so when you open, sorry, when I open the case, inside is one solar panel. So this is a 128 uh, watt solar panel. You can see it's flexible. And uh, when I open it up, I can roll it out. And this is actually what would get it installed on the roof of the school. The back of this has, has an adhesive already attached to it. So I peel the white backing off it, and then I can stick it down right onto the roof, or better, another you know piece of plywood or something that gets bolted onto the roof. So as you can roll it, I unroll it and unroll it, and you can see, on this end I have the connectors that attach actually to the cables that we'll talk about. Okay, I have various cable combinations. They're all color-coded together to make it easy to connect it. We'll show you the steps of how to actually attach all the cabling together in a, in a few moments later on in this demonstration. We have the charge controller. Okay. What the charge controller does is it con controls and protects the batteries. So this understands when you have a laptop or a tablet or so on plugged into the system, this unit will, will be able to understand how much power I should be providing to the batteries in order to bring the batteries to a full charge versus how much is available to actually power the laptop. Finally, um, in order to be able to plug your laptops or your tablet or your cell phones in as normally, there is an inverter which takes the DC power from the batteries and changes it into a, a plug as you would normally have in your home. Okay, to put the system together, Wesley, um, first there is some wiring that needs to be done to attach your battery. This particular system is a 24 volt system, which is why we have two batteries. Okay. There's also an opportunity for a 12 volt system, which would only have one battery. I have one harness that allows me to connect the solar panel to the charge controller. You can see they have two different weatherproof connectors. Same here, and there's a male one and a female one. So one goes to one, push it all the way in, and one goes to the other one, push it all the way in and this is now a weatherproof seal. So the solar panel is now ready to, ready to, uh, to plug in. The first step I take, however, is the red, which is the positive uh, DC from the battery. I plug into the charge controller first, and here as well, um, it's a male and a female connector. They only go in one way, and I slide it in. So I can see here, the battery at this point is fully charged, so it's telling me the state of the battery. It's measuring the, the voltage and current available in the battery. Okay. Next, I plug the solar panel in. And here, it's exactly the same connector. I just line it up, plug it in, it clicks. And as soon as I plug the solar in, you should see on the screen, you will start to see some, how much it's coming, in. it's coming in from the panel. Let me see that here, 25.9. Okay. The final connection is to connect the inverter to the system. Okay. And that's with the black connector, and I just plug them together. Okay. So the system is now fully connected. The inverter is taking straight DC from the battery, turning it into AC, and now you're able to plug your laptop into the front of the inverter. The inverter has an on switch, so I plug it on, and now I can see that the inverter is now supplying power. Each one of the wire harnesses does have a fuse assembly attached to it. If there is a problem, just like in your car, if, there, if a fuse blows for any reason, it really shouldn't, it's, the cap comes off and I can just replace the fuse the same as in the car. So the lights right now tells me that my battery is full. Mm -hmm. So if the battery is full, the system is not supplying any power for charging because the battery is full. So what I should see over time, I should see the battery to reduce, as if I plug something into here, I will reduce to a lower level, and as that's lower, then the charging light would come on to say the solar system now knows to apply power into the battery. 
If I continue, if I were to continue to supply power into the battery to a full battery, I will damage the battery and cause it ultimately to fail. So Wesley, in order to, to run a laptop or a tablet or your charger cell phone from the system, it's just, uh, I just, as you normally would in your house, we just plug the unit into the inverter instead and ensure that it is turned on. So you can see now this is on, it's a green light telling me the inverter is operating and we have a laptop now plugged into the system that I have removed the internal battery from and we can see that, uh, that it will charge up, it will it'll boot up as normal. You're using it directly powerful. I'm using directly power ultimately from the battery. The size of the system is sized for, for running a, a laptop for four hours a day. Uh, laptops are about 100 watts, so they're a fairly, fairly large draw of power. Um, tablets are a much lower draw of power, and cell phones clearly a much lower draw of power. You know, seven watts, five watts, four watts would be normal for them. So you would be able to run them a much longer time, okay? What the system is trying to do in terms of the limitation of how you, much you plug in here mm -hmm. is we need to give the system enough time to keep the battery fully charged throughout the day as well. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. My pleasure, Leslie.